Have you heard that you can animate a single drawing in OpenTunes? Well, you can, using a little tool called the Plastic Tool. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to a look at the Plastic Tool. There's a lot to this powerful little tool, but today I'll just cover the parts that you'll find most useful. So the Plastic Tool is used to apply movement to a static drawing, and this is particularly useful for adding life to background characters that don't need detailed movements, or to an actual background, like swaying bushes and trees in the wind. And for items in the background, it's easy to duplicate and reuse the animations using sub X sheets, and here's how you set them all up. So first I'll draw a character to be used in the background crowd scene, and because they're shown in the background they don't need to be drawn too detailed, and because this is just a demo I won't worry about drawing them too neatly today either. Ok so here we'll do. So first I'll select the plastic tool which is at the bottom left here in the toolbar, and at the top of the screen you see the options we can use. Now the first thing we need to do is to hit the create mesh button. And this allows you to create a mesh of triangles over the character that are used to deform him. So you can see at the bottom here the character is partially on the screen and you can use the middle mouse button or the arrow keys to click and drag him to the centre and then you can use the plus and minus keys to make him larger or smaller. And now I've made him larger you can see the triangles that will be used to create the mesh and it's important to consider the size of the mesh for your character as the more triangles you have the more processing it takes to deform the mesh Therefore, the slower your computer might go, especially if you've got a number of them on screen. But the more triangles you have, the more detailed the transformation can be. So it's always important to find the right balance between the two. So I'm happy with the size of the mesh, but before I hit apply, let me just close that, and I'll rename the column because it uses the column name to create a new mesh layer, as you'll see in a second. So again, run the plastic tool, I hit create mesh, we've got the mesh size I'm happy with, so I hit apply. And you can see immediately it's created a new level called person underscore mesh, shown in purple, as all mesh levels are. And on the table you can see the green triangular mesh on top of the character. And if we go to the schematic by changing the rooms, or just bring up the schematic view on this page, you'll notice that the mesh has been inserted between the table and the actual person drawing. And that's so that when you edit the mesh, it also edits the person as that's the child of the mesh. And if you've not used a schematic before, don't worry too much as this is set up for you automatically every time you make a new mesh. So let's go back to the animation. So now we've created the mesh, the next thing to do is to build the skeleton. And you can see in the mode here, that's automatically selected as the next option to do. If it's not, you can just simply select it from the options there. So to build a skeleton, first you've got to select the mesh level. And now you simply click on screen to draw the skeleton. So you click a root point first. Then you click the second point and that connects to the root. And from here you just draw a point where the character can rotate and deform. So we'll go from the top of the arm, to an elbow, to where the hand begins, to the end of the hand. And then to draw the other arm, you select on the centre point again. And then I'll select on the start of the arm, the elbow, the end of the arm and the hand. Finally we'll draw the head and neck, so click again on the centre point up to the bottom of the neck and then the centre of the head. And for this character the head isn't going to do much apart from rotate left to right. So before you go any further it's always worth checking the character will animate as you expect. So you change from the build skeleton option to the animate option and then to try moving parts of the skeleton and check the character moves as you expect it. So I'll move the head first, it can move left to right and you can see him deforming at the neck and shoulders there but that's fine. And then we'll press undo remove that and again with the arm yes we can wave the arm we can bend at the elbow and you can wave the hand and you notice as I move the hand part of the arm moves as well and that's because it's just deforming those triangles and sometimes this can extend further than you'd like it to I'll undo that and the way you can stop that happening is by telling the skeleton tool that certain parts of your character are rigid so they shouldn't move for instance, if I move the top of the body here. So you do that by changing the mode to Paint Rigid. And then you get a second option of a thickness for the brush. Now you see there's a circle here attached to the cursor. 
and you can make this larger or smaller depending how much detail you need to paint in there okay so all I want to do for this character is to paint in between those joints just by clicking on the screen and painting in between them and again around the shoulder we don't want that to move so let's try going back to the animate tool and now if I move the hand you see the arm doesn't move at all in the center here so to actually lay down some animation we need some frames so we click and drag on both the drawing level and on the mesh level and extend that to a certain number of frames okay so on frame one we make sure we're selected onto the mesh level because the mesh we're editing we make sure we're in that animate mode and what we want is the character to be waving his arms and moving side to side as though he's at a sport event and cheering on his favorite team so on frame one we want to set a key for all of the points and you can set keys for individual points on the skeleton or for all of the points on the skeleton and you can see this better in the function editor we'll take a quick look at now now you can see here for the person mesh you've got basic position and rotation for the whole mesh to move them around the screen and then you've got the plastic skeleton as a separate subcategory and if you open that up you can see there's 12 vertexes and one root object and that's these points here and as you set a key that adds a key into the function editor so if I just press that to turn them all on you can see currently there's no keys at all in here so there's a few different ways to set up the keys to animate this character and the first and most obvious way is just to click and drag on the points in the skeleton and move it to new position and if I look over here in the function editor on the right hand side you can see the angle has changed now the distance and stacking order haven't changed because I've not tried to change them you can change the stacking order by typing in here which is useful when you want parts of the character to move in front of or behind other parts I won't be touching that today and you can change the distance by typing in here like that for instance to make the distance of the point further away from its previous one or if you want to do that more visually, there's a checkbox at the top here labelled Keep Distance. If you untick that, you can then click and drag and make parts of your image larger as well as rotating it. And that sets the distance value here. And the final way to make a change is by double clicking into the function editor and just typing a value and then pressing Enter. And the final way is to right click on any of the points on the skeleton and choose Set Global Key or Set Global Rest Key. And set global key just sets the key at the current position so if I move down to frame 12 for instance and then choose set global key which copies the values of the preceding key into the current frame or if I move down again or you can right click and choose set global rest key which resets all the values back to zero so this has introduced an interpolation from the previous key of 10 down to zero and if you select anywhere between the keys you can see the interpolation value you can change it hit apply and it sets the value between those keys and of course you can also edit these values using the graph editor as I've shown in previous videos but I won't go through today okay so let's clear all those out and I'll do that by clicking and highlighting over all of them and hitting the delete key okay so let's create this animation so we'll start at frame one we want the character to be waving so I'll make sure the keep distance is checked so I can just rotate each of the body parts On the arm to come down so to make this repeating I'll click on the first row of keys copy them and just paste them at the end so let's just turn off the mesh and see how that looks a little slow so what I'll do is I'll move the keys upwards so it doesn't last as long so it's 13 frames long replay that Bring it down to 12 because frame 13 of course is the same as frame 1. If we take a look at the interpolation, so we want speed in and speed out for all of them. Which makes it a little neater. So that's how you animate a skeletal character, but what about duplicating it as I mentioned earlier? Well, what we can do is to place the drawing and the mesh into a sub X sheet. So you just select on the column header 
hold control and select on the next column header, right click and choose collapse. I'm not using any peg bar so it doesn't matter but we'll hit apply. So that combines both those two columns and all of the keys into a sub X sheet. So it's a much simpler view on the main X sheet. But that means we can now duplicate this character by copying and pasting these 12 frames here. But because we don't want all the characters waving at the same time, we can space them out differently. So we'll copy some of the frames, say from 5 to 12, and paste them here. So now I've got two people sitting on the same spot. And because it's a cycle, after frame 12, we want frame 1 through to 4, and that'll then cycle around all 12 frames. And all we need to do is to go to frame 1, choose the animate tool, and then change the position of the second person. And then when we animate, they'll wave at different times. So let's just see that on a cycle. So I'll just duplicate that a few more times. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And also that's playing slowly because it's adjusting all of those meshes, which I was talking earlier about choosing the size of your mesh carefully. Finally, what we can do if we want to, is we can put all of those five columns into another sub X sheet. So you can have sub X sheets within sub X sheets. And this allows you to duplicate the five people to become 10 people or 15. And now we've got 15 characters in a crowd scene, all cheering and waving at different times. And of course you can apply an effect over the characters to change the colour or to make them fade out into the background some more. Like this. So that's how you can use the plastic tool with your drawings to add an internal skeleton to a simple character. But it can be used for much more than just humanoid characters. And next week in part 2 I'll show you a different technique to how I animated this caterpillar and moving background. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.